In this video, we're going to talk about how you can implement multi-threading into your Java programs. So you'll be able to write Java programs that do multiple different things at the same time. My name is Sean. I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned in a clear, understandable way. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new video. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description if you're interested. Multi-threading is the ability to execute multiple different paths of code at the same time. So normally in your Java programs, it's only using one thread, but you have the ability to break off into multiple threads and do multiple things at once. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. In Java, there are two main ways of creating a new thread. The first way is to have a class extend the thread class. That might sound a little complicated, but it's really not. So to do that right here next to your main class, you're just going to want to create a new uh, Java class. You can call it whatever you want, doesn't matter. Uh, we'll call it a multi-thread uh, thing. Now again, it doesn't matter what this is called, but it does have to extend thread. So now that this class extends thread, the only other thing you have to do in this class to make it multi-threadable is to override the thread class's run method. To do that, you just have to type in public void run, open close parentheses, and then open and close curly braces. Since we're overriding the thread classes run method here, it's good practice to put in an at override uh, annotation here above it. So that's really all the setup that you need. The only thing you have to do now is write whatever code that you want to run in multiple threads inside this run method. So let's just do something really simple here, like um, count up the numbers uh, from one to five. So we can just do that with a simple for loop for int i equals one i less than or equal to five i plus plus just system dot out dot print line um, i. And just to make this a little bit more interesting, we're going to make it a sleep for one second between each number it prints out. That way we can watch it print out each number one at a time. To do that, we can just do thread uh, dot sleep and we put in the number of milliseconds we want it to sleep. So that can be a thousand, a thousand milliseconds is one second. Eclipse is giving us an error here because we have to uh, surround a thread dot sleep with a try catch. So we can just have it automatically do that. We don't have to do anything special if we run into any exceptions. So this empty catch block is just fine. So now we have a class that extends thread and we have overridden the thread classes run method. So now how do we go about actually kicking off this code in multiple threads? To do that, let's go back to our main class and first create an object of that multi-thread thing class that we created. Let's call it my thing equals new multi-thread thing. Now we have this my thing object and you, and you might think since we implemented the run method that we want to actually call my thing dot run. Now you can do that. That'll work. It'll run the code that we wrote in that run method, but it won't actually do it in a separate thread. To actually kick off a new thread, you have to instead call my thing dot start. So now what'll happen here, as soon as it gets to this part in the code, Java will branch off a brand new thread and start running this run method. And after it kicks off that new thread and lets it go do its thing, it'll proceed down the main thread that it was executing here. So now we can go ahead and run it and watch it go with just one thread. One, two, three, four, five and then the program finishes. So that's cool and all, but the whole point of this is multi-threading. So let's go ahead and create a second thread and watch them go at the same time. So let's just copy paste that. We'll say my thing two, and then copy paste that and say my thing two dot start right after the first my thing. Now, if we run our program, we can truly see that we have two different threads counting up one to five at exactly the same time. As a quick note, if we would have called our run method instead, let's go ahead and change these both to use run we can see that it's not actually doing multiple threads. It's doing the first my things run, printing out one through five. And then once that's done, it finishes and does the second things a counting of one through five. It's not doing them both at the same time. So remember, you have to use the start method if you actually want multiple concurrent threads. And now if you want more than just like two threads like this, you can create a whole bunch of them very easily by doing something like a for loop or int i equals zero, i less than five. Let's say we want to try doing five threads at a time, i plus plus. We can just take this line, copy it in here, and the start command here, get rid of all this, we don't need it anymore. And now we'll create and start five threads in this for loop, so we can watch that go. We have now five threads, all counting one through five, at exactly the same time. To make things a little bit more interesting, we can kind of assign a number to each thread so we can see which thread is printing which number. To do that, we can go back over to our multi-thread thing class and actually create um, a new constructor. So that'll just be public, multi-thread thing, and we'll actually have it take in a parameter of an int, and we'll just call it thread number. And we'll also uh, create a little class variable here, just have it a private int thread number. And in this constructor, we'll just assign this dot thread number to be equal to 
thread number that's passed in in the method here. So now back here in our main class where we're creating this multi-thread thing object, we need to pass in a number for the thread number. And here we can just use i because we're going through a for loop anyway. But what's neat about that is in our run method, instead of just printing out i, we can print out uh, which thread it is. So like from thread, thread number, we go back and run our program, we can now see which thread is printing which number, and we get some kind of interesting results. So you might assume that because thread 0 is created first that it would get printed out first, but it doesn't. In this case, thread 1 happens to be printed first, and then 3, and then 2. What that tells you is that when you break into multiple threads, there's absolutely no guarantee which thread is going to be doing its thing first. They're all running at the same time completely independently, so there is going to be some slight variance in their timing. One of the really cool things about multi-threading is that if one of the threads blows up with some kind of exception, it doesn't impact any of the other ones. All of the other ones just keep going business as usual. So to demonstrate that, let's actually um, make an exception happen in one of the threads. So let's just say here in our run method, we could just say if thread number equals um, three, uh, we're just going to flat out uh, throw a new uh, runtime exception. So of course this will make thread number three blow up. So now we can save that, go back and run it. And we can see that thread number three uh, blows up with a runtime exception after it prints the number one, but all the other threads go ahead and continue printing out all their numbers. Let's go ahead and get rid of that bit of craziness. But that even applies to our main thread. If in here we go ahead and start all of these other threads counting one through five, and then immediately run into an exception, that won't stop all the other threads from still completing. So if here we say throw new runtime exception, run our program, and we can see that even though we run into a runtime exception in the main thread in our main method, all of those other threads that we kicked off continue to run completely independently because there was no exception in those threads. So now I mentioned there were two ways of creating a multi-threadable Java class. And the first way was extending the thread class. And the other way, instead of extending the thread class, you can implement the runnable interface. What's nice about that is that when you implement the runnable interface, the only thing you have to do is have your own implementation of the run method, which is the same as if you extend thread. So there's really nothing else you have to change about this class. But back here in our main method, we can't just call start anymore because we don't extend thread. So there's a small extra step. But all we have to do is say thread my thread equals new thread and then pass it uh, that object that implements the runnable interface. So for us, it's my thing. And then instead of my thing dot start, we'll say my thread dot start. And we'll also get rid of this uh, silly exception, but really that's the only other thing that changes. You can go ahead and run your program and all of your threads will operate at the same time exactly as they did before. So you're probably wondering, you know, which is better? Which one should I do? You can either extend the thread class like we did first or implement the runnable interface like we have here. On one hand, if you extend the thread class, you get rid of the need to have this little extra line where you're creating a thread. But on the other hand, I think there is a major advantage to implementing the runnable interface instead of extending thread. So the problem here is that if you extend thread, you can't extend any other class. Java doesn't allow multiple inheritance. You can only be a subclass of one class. And if you are a subclass of thread by extending thread, you can't be a subclass of any other class, and you're just kind of stuck. If you implement runnable, you can still uh, have it extend any other class that you might feel like extending that makes sense for your code. And also Java doesn't limit the number of interfaces you can implement. So you can implement uh, another interface here too. So although using implements runnable kind of gives you that extra step of having to create a new thread here before you can use it, it does give you a whole lot of flexibility to be able to have your multi-threading class extend any other class you might want. There are also a few really useful methods on thread that you should know how to use. One is mythread.join. You can see on the documentation here, it says that this method waits for this thread to die. And that really is what it does. Normally when you start a thread, the rest of the program will just continue on. But if for some reason you want your program to stop and wait for that thread to complete, you can just call the join method on that thread and it will stop executing that program until that thread completes. So Java is making us around this with a try catch. So we'll go ahead and do that. So here now, since we call join right after we start each thread, um, as the program runs, it's going to wait for that thread to complete before it starts the next one. So it kind of defeats the purpose of multi-threading in this particular program. But you can see how it works. If you have one thread that you want to uh, wait for another to complete, that's what you would use here. You would use uh, the dot join method.
Another method that's good to know is called is alive. And that just returns a Boolean true or false for whether the thread is currently still running. So for example, in our case, while each thread is still counting from one to five, if we called is alive on it, it would return true. But once that thread completes, if we called is alive, it would return false. If you've learned something in this video, please let me know by leaving a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. Liking, commenting, and subscribing is the only way these videos get out to help more people. So I really do appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.